You're listening to Real Estate in Bourbon. Whether you like it neat or on the rocks, you're in the right place. And now your host, Dawn Roy. Hey there, my precious angels. It's Dawn with Real Estate and Bourbon. And today I want to introduce to you one of my dearest friends, Tammy Brawley, who is a, I'm not going to say a chef. You're the chef, (laughs) right? I like to think so. (laughs) (laughs) And if you haven't been to her house for a, Good cooked meal, you're missing out. Mm. Milton and I just are still talking about that. Good, meal. I'm so glad. Thank you. So it much. was she had us over to her cutest little bungalow. I can't even remember what we fixed. What did we fix for dinner? That it night? was a salmon. Oh, that's right. And yes, with the salmon. with the you did the um, parsnip and cauliflower puree. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. honey hush. Good. Sunday hush. night we had rabbit meatballs. This past Sunday night, like like. Yeah, bunny. Bunny rabbit? Yeah. Oh, delicious. <laughs> I don't know if I can go there. That's, a, that's interesting. That is, yeah. It was great. I mean, where do you find rabbit meat? At a local farm, actually. At, no, Louisa. <laughs> say, like, uh, backyard. <laughs> My backyard. <laughs> well, I got a few brown ones that the dog's trying to catch, but... Um, it's actually, it's a very good meat. It really is. And I made rabbit meatballs with dried morel mushrooms yeah. and a delicious sauce. We did beef marrow. We did um, you. I've seen on Facebook where you've done the beef marrow. I, that, oh, yeah. Now that just not kind of my speed. Now, I know. I, I know. am the parsnip, and all that you did was oh, beautiful. Flavors. I just like flavors. Do Good you flavors. tell and then she roasted after they eat the uh, no. rabbit meatball? No, they knew what they were getting themselves into, yeah. and then they got there. So. Yeah. That would like as their <laughs> on their second one. Well, this is a little game. <laughs> this is deli- <laughs> delicious. What was that? <laughs> Do you feel like eating carrots right now? <laughs> that funny, and and she's uh, my rye girl. She loves a rye, and yes, so I've got a beautiful so. rye today. I thought you said ride. Like I did too. I like ride, ride or, or die. die. Oh damn, that's pretty high up there. If you're my ride, you or are die my girl. ride or die. You are. I have sat on her screen porch. And commiserated and mm. talk relationship. This she is my ride or die. Well, I'd have to say you're mine as well. Yeah, we 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 both like. Um, I, well, I've sold a few houses for her. We've both gone through divorces together. We've mm-hmm. I mean, it's all the things we've done. The dating thing, <laughs> the dating apps. <laughs> That's a whole other podcast. All conversations revolving around <sighs> such. All conversations. So um, sad. A lot of it was just quite humorous. If we were, I think we should almost create, a, write a book or do a blog about just, you know, dating at, at you know, in I your 50s. this morning what, how long what? we've known each other. It, it's been um, thir- 13 years. At least. Yeah. So it was 2012 when you sold me. That's the little Duck, Duck River Court. Duck River Court mm-hmm. from 2012. So I've known you that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You talked me down off of a couple ledges for uh, real estate. I and appreciate you, right. that. <laughs> You know, and, and usually my go-to is like, I'll be right over. I've got a bottle of bourbon just for you. I'll be right there. So um, this works. This, so this lovely, um, for th- so this is a dark rye, and it is from our lovely folks at Three Crosses Distillery here in Powhatan. Can't wait to try it. They are just the sweetest people. During COVID, they did take um, some of their vodka. So in- instead of making vodka, they made hand sanitizer. Oh, and very good. And you could go to their shop, and they were selling bottles of hands. I heard about I mean, that. like, right in the thick of it when it first started. Right. You could not find Clorox wipes, hand oh, sanitizers, any Crazy. toilet paper. Um, so I remember I was in Puerto Vallarta in February of that year, and I get off the plane. I go home, and Ashley, my soon-to-be daughter-in-law, Precious Angel, who was a teacher at the time, she calls me and says, hey, We've got to go to Costco, and we need to buy toilet paper and all kinds of this and that and the other. And I said, "Why? Why? Why do we? What's 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 the big you know hurry to get Costco toilet paper?" And she goes, "Well, because of the virus." I said, "The virus? What are you fucking millennials uptight about a flu? What what the shit?" And she's like, "Haven't you been paying attention to the news? That might be a dollar right there. <laughs> I think it I, might be two dollars. That might be two dollars right there." I said. She goes, haven't you followed? I'm like, I've been in Puerto Vallarta drinking rum drinks. I mean, what, what do you, you know? And she goes, well, there's, <laughs> there's this virus. True to form, two weeks later, of course, the, the world shuts down. Mm-hmm. It went, leave it to a teacher to keep you updated on oh, what's going that's what they're good for. on in the world. You know? So anyway, here we go. Let's take a little sip of this. First of all, cheers well, to you, cheers my to you. precious friend. I, I adore you. Ooh, that's got a mm. different smell to it. My goodness. Oh, that is caramely, 
It is caramely. It's sweet. It's very sweet, I think. It's, it, it's dissipating there towards the end, but yeah, it's caramely there at the beginning, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a cube of ice would actually do this perfectly. <sighs> don't fuck know, up don't a good bourbon. It. Yes, but let's, let's, let's go with the difference. What's the difference between bourbon and rye? Uh, it's made with rye. Right, as opposed to <laughs> corn. As opposed to corn. Okay, yeah. so that's good. And corn, I'm, corn, 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 corn. <laughs> I'm from the South. I should know that. Um, but you know what's fine? I find the difference is I'm not a bourbon or a whiskey fan, whereas you are. Mm, and very much the so. rye, I absolutely love rye. Well, and I brought you when we came to dinner, oh. which she, by the way, <laughs> sends me a text message not too long after we had dinner at her house. Let's I bought her the Katakin Creek from Percival, less than a which week. is lovely. And she sends me a video with the bottle going, it's empty. <laughs> less than a week later. Yeah, less than a week later. I said, well, I'm going to get you another one, baby girl. Yeah. I, I, and, and, and it's easily found at ABC stores. Yeah. And so I is this love, one. I absolutely love rye whiskey. I don't know. There's not, just such a difference it's just between made, it's rye made and with corn. A different and I don't grain, know why, all. but yeah. I just, just, just I, it's my preferred drink as a rye. I've got a dear friend. Uh, her name is Rose. She lives in um, Waynesboro, up in the, <clears> that way. <throat> She used to live here. That's how I know her. And she's a Kentucky girl. And she's a rye girl. Mm, interesting. She loves Knob Creek and all of Yeah, those. Knob Creek rye is good. Um, not much of a fan of a bullet. Sorry, bullet. I'm not a bullet person no, either. not a bullet person. Um, the Catoctin's really, really good. Recently, a client turned me on to Sazerac rye. Ooh. And um, I thought that was really good. And then I had the Catoctin, and I'm like, mm, Ooh. I think I kind of found a new favorite. Well, Although, and I think Catoctin Creek, it, it's, a, it's a low proof, in my opinion. <clears throat> so it's like an 80 proof. You know, I, I kind of swim in that mid-90s mm-hmm. is for kind of just your normal mm-hmm. um day to day so it a lot of it does you know like if you go get the barrel proof of elijah craig that shit will take your head off it's oh, 112 yeah. proof yeah you know it's it's like 56 percent alcohol yeah i'm not really looking for something i don't like i that. don't want to do that yeah. and i it was hard to drink a friend of mine charlie who everybody knows he was on the podcast he he will send me texts and goes okay so at your abc store there's this this and this go go get it take a picture of that you got it and he and, and so he he says get this Elijah Craig, barrel proof. So I run my ass and like and the last bottle's walking out there. I'm like Charlie, where? he goes, hold on, I'm rerouting you. <laughs> he routes me to another <laughs> ABC store. That's what I call a serious person. I mean, yeah, he knows absolutely. when stuff's dropping, where it is, all the. So I run and I get it. So that night I pour a you know I pour a you know a finger and uh, I'm sitting there this and I take a, this you know like a couple of fingers and I you know. <laughs> however you want to use that finger. And uh, I sit there and take a picture of it. And he goes, have you tried it? And I'm like, "Um, no. He goes, call me after you take it. I mean, it was so spicy and difficult to drink. It really was. I mean, that one totally is a, you know, some water or something. It was so, so that I'm not in, and that's not where I want to live. You know, I I have a bottle of that, but I don't, it's not going to, I'm not going to drink it. Right. See, I, I don't like to live in the fast lane like that either. I mm. want to enjoy the flavor, and I think that also stems from being a chef. I don't, you which know, is definitely, I think, that's you know, part I, of. Your I love MO. spicy food, but I don't want spicy food so spicy that I can't taste the meal. Yeah, but I'm the same way with the rye. I like the flavor components of right. it, and yeah, the Catoctin was was to it's me. It's got that. It's it's so mellow. It is. This is good, and I like the caramel and initial I think once flavor. You get past the spice, it's yeah, I, and there is a different smell about I this. I almost got like a nutmeg there There is something else that's really lovely and now on the second sip you're getting less of the spice yeah i do get sweetness on that so well i loved what whatever you brought to the house tonight (laughs) one of those nights um on the porch (laughs) and you were teaching me and i think it was bourbon that night it wasn't even rye yeah it was just it was a and you were telling me about swishing your mouth with the water you know and then taking another sip well you smell it with your mouth open yeah and you really, and, and I think as a, you know, you the, get the flavor, the palate's open, all the senses Absolutely. are going. Yep. And then you, the first taste is always going to be the more spicy one. That's where you're going to get the burn. Yep. When I say spicy, I mean burn. And then when you taste it, go back again, then you're getting more of the flavor profile. Yep. Because Absol- now you're I used agree. to the burn. I agree. You get the, and, and I want to say part of the things that I like about your cooking, it's not in your face, if that makes any sense. You, <laughs> you're not an in your face cook no. or chef. You... The flavor profiles, there is, they're to be discovered. They're just not like jumping at you. Yep. 
And that's what I like. I mean, you know, there's not a, it's not heavy garlic. It's not heavy no. rosemary. It's not heavy, you know, salt or I any like, of that. I, complimentary flavors is yes. what I like. Like with the salmon I did for you in Milton and then the parsnip and the cauliflower puree. Which I've got You to, know, just, yes. I mean, it was just like this creamy texture with the smoked salmon. And it just. If you've that. never, this, this, this will change your life. <laughs> This this parsnip cauliflower dish will change your life. Well, a lot of people they don't know about parsnips, you know, and it they look like they're from the carrot family, but they've just got this really distinct flavor. Right. And you kind of tone it down a little bit with the cauliflower, but then the two of them together, it's it's a, it's a match made. And you just you just boil them both and boil pot? them both together till they're fork tender, and then drain them and put them in the food processor. And, and you add in a little bit of butter, you know, a little bit of butter. Um, uh, just a little salt and pepper. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> just a, mostly butter, I, you know, but nothing, you know, no fancy spices, nothing. You and know, it was, it was, it was just lovely. So salmon, if it's done right, which you did it beautifully, just has this wonderful flaky buttery feel to mm-hmm. it anyway. And then she had, then she roasted these ginormous asparagus spears. It was mm. like, where the hell did these things come from oh, yeah. on her grill? So you had a combination of grilled vegetable you know, a, a blended vegetable, then this beautiful salmon that was... I think we smoked it, didn't we? In didn't your I, roaster yeah, thing in on the, the smoker. stove. Yeah, and know? then I hit it with a little bit of smoked sea salt there at the end. So, yeah, simple. I'm moving in with, in with you tomorrow. Can I? Uh, which bedroom can I have? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Come on. You have to wash dishes, though. I will wash dishes. You <laughs> cook, I wash dishes. I mean, I would do what... I'll wash dishes all day. And I, I, I iron clothes well, and I'll be more than happy to wash oh, your dishes. Come on. Yeah, my mom is an Italian cook, and so oh, she... Wow. She, um, it's stay out of the kitchen type of thing, you yeah. know, type of deal. You don't go in the kitchen unless yeah. you're been asked to go move something or whatever. But, um, the, um, the art of timing, Absolutely. she has oh, it, huge. she has it down. It's, it's, I, I, I still learn it to this day. Oh, it comes I from years of experience. Yeah. And so, um, you know, those type of things where, uh, like, a someone who understands where, there's a process of when it's things like, are me, going to be put in, when right. things are going to be put out, when things are going to be start you, you working on. Yeah, you, you count know, backwards. Yeah. And, and and she cleans as she cooks too. So yep, I definitely clean know, as I, I cook. cook and um, but there's never there's never downtime. I'm not going to sit there and wait for the entree to get to done do. and right. then do the vegetable and right. then do the side. Right. No, no, it's it's, it's all, like I'm I'm starting it all together, right. you know, and and then all of a sudden it's done and it's ready to be served. I clean as I go as well. and then you sit on this lovely deck looking at this lovely garden that she has and it's it's just a wonderful ex- it's a nice evening it's a wonderful experience i thought we had a great night oh, been a great it. night good thank you um you came. so i we need to talk about and i think this will probably be published after um uh, your the contest that you're in but ah. i i am going to still make a comment and if you can get me a clip pretty quickly i'd like to post that tomorrow uh-huh. or thank you, know. you so your tammy is in a contest for best chef it's, it's somewhat of a content. It's more of a fundraiser. Um, I was a tad disappointed when I first was accepted because I thought it was going to be a cooking competition that I would be competing you, against somebody you, else. You doing get to it. cook. And it's not. It's a fundraising competition for the James Beard Foundation, which is a wonderful foundation that yes. assists all, pe- all sorts of people, not just chefs and restaurant industries. And they pivoted during the, the COVID the pan- pandemic and stuff. Right. But they operate. They are a nonprofit um, company and so but they help chefs across the country what they're currently doing is called favorite chef 2023 and the competition um, we have a chance to win twenty five thousand dollars and a chance to cook with Carla Hall who is somebody I've always loved she was on top chef season five and she's just one of these personalities that she didn't fall victim to reality TV right during that episode or during that segment of top chef she was doing yoga and helping her other her you know uh, fellow contestants so she never fell victim to the drama and the bitterness that goes on in some of those reality tv shows right. so i immediately developed a, a connection with her at least in my mind anyway so i've always admired her she's gonna to love you oh I, I'm, I'm just saying right I now i can't wait to win the contest put me on the you. phone with her i know i carla can't hi girl <laughs> you know i can't wait so um anyway. well you're currently i i am we have groups across the united states and in within my group i am number one she's and currently in first for, place um over a week this Thursday, they're having the third cut of rounds, round of cuts. Yes, round of cuts. And um, right now, I am one of ten. And Thursday, I hope to stay one of five. Wow. Um, Isn't that hot? It, it wraps up um, the second week of August. It's when there'll be quarterfinals and semifinals. Um, what's going to happen when it comes down to it, the, the votes kind of get um, emptied, so to speak. And yeah. then you can re-vote. 
Right. So that's when the, you know, what do they say? The pedal hits the metal. We're going to put it out there. So the last dish you made for the voting, Mm because that's what it is, is you do a dish every time? We do have, no, no, you don't actually don't. There's no cooking actually whatsoever. You can go to my profile and you can see pictures of what I've posted of meals that I have made. Wow. And you get to learn a little bit about me. But it's people who already know that she's, you know, it's it's people who know that somebody's a chef and does things. I thought there was like. Rounds where you had to cook something. And oh, she wish. thought it was going to be that, and she I would did. love that to happen. I thought. I think that would have been fabulous. And yeah. I, if you ever get into one of those, I'm your sous chef. Oh, definitely. I am your sous chef. <laughs> I can chop shit. And my taste tester. The taste tester. I'll well, do the taste tester. Um, there is going to be, part of this is going to be that Carla herself um, gets to pick the prettiest presentation of the groups. Yes. So we learn throughout this thing, they're giving us also workshops. Like there was a workshop about video presentation Mm. and how to take pictures of food and how you use the right Mm -hmm. light and things Mm -hmm. like that. Then last night there was a workshop from the COO of the James Beard Foundation talking about leadership and things like that. Um, And then there was another one of a video um, person. Um, She owns a a company where she helps restaurants. I don't want to say solicit, but how to take pictures and how to right. promote well, your listen, food and things like right. that. Right? So. It's it's a, it's a listen. <clears throat> most of the businesses that we're in are not what we do. It's mar- we're in a marketing business Absolutely. that happens to do real estate. Yeah. You're in a marketing business. You happen to be a chef. You're in yeah. a marketing business. You happen right. to do photography and podcasts and everything. That it's how you present. Absolutely out there, and and she does. She does a great job. I mean, I encourage everybody to follow you on Facebook or Instagram. That. Just listen. I go. What was the one, Milton and I, Chris was down last week, and he loves guacamole. Mm. My brother, Chris. Is it guacamole? Or guacamole. It's guacamole. <laughs> he loves it. And I had gotten two gua- you know, two avocados that were just, I could have killed a human being. I could use it as a baseball. Okay? Mm. And she put on her Facebook page, if you. Put them in the microwave for two minutes. Don't peel them. Don't try to cut them in half. Put them in the microwave for two minutes, and they are perfect. For guacamole. I learned something Absolutely. on and Instagram. And I was like, you're crazy. And yeah, we did it. No, that's true. I learned something on Instagram for preserving guacamole is that you put them in a, a bowl in water in the refrigerator and they stay longer, fresher. Um, I could see that concept because what we do is actually take a wet paper towel, ta- a paper towel, excuse me, wet it with tap water yeah. and place it over top of the guacamole yeah. before you put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. And it will still get a layer, layer of brown on it, but then you stir it up and underneath is completely clean. Right. It, and it bananas that way too. You uh, take a wet paper towel, wipe it down, take another wet paper towel, wrap it around the, the stem part, and it'll stay fresher longer. I did not know that. You mean the guacamole, the, no, the avocado? The, no, the avocado in a, in a refrigerator in the water. Right. The banana... And paper towel. Paper, towel, paper towel, wrap the a wet paper towel on the, on, on the stem, leave it wherever you leave it, and it'll stay fresher longer. Yeah, nothing drives me crazier well, than... Well, they're hydrating. They're staying hydrated. Right. Yeah, so maybe like that's we all I need. I need. We probably um, should do some more hydration ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, putting them in the microwave, though, I was I was shocked at that. Two minutes, and... I was like, you crazy girl. Right, you crazy girl. Perfectly right for, yeah. for guacamole. Yeah, that's so... Nice you got to have someone like this in your life. Well, but her being a chef is the icing on the cake... Cake, you need to have someone like Tam in your life because she's precious. Well, you're really sweet. And she's authentic and organic. She will tell me my shit is shit, or she'll tell me I'm right. I'm pretty authentic. (laughs) Yeah, you you will you will call it what you know. You call it what it is. I do. And I I, and a personality like me loves that. And you know, when she came when we came into the studio today to do the podcast, she's like, "Well, what? How am I gonna? You know, I'm a chef. What am I gonna talk about with real estate?" And I'm like, "Well, girl, that's how we met." You know, and th- that's how I do want to do real estate. If you don't become, if we're not friends after it's over, mm-hmm. something went wrong. Absolutely. I agree. Because I want to be, I want to be connected to you in your life. It's just not about selling Duck River Court or whatever we did together. Mm-hmm. It's, I want to be in your life. Well, and you have been, I mean, it's since 2012 and here we are at 23. So that's, that's actually 11 years. Yes. So for 11 years, we've been friends yeah. and um, it's been great. You know, I, in selling the houses, I can't think of, go- I would never go to anybody else. You know, anybody says to me, do you know a real estate agent? I'm like, I, I got you. I got you covered. Got you covered. You know, and so I, I'm always going to send them to you. Oh, you're and so I, sweet. And you know, it's, what's great about it is, you know, a lot of real estate agents, they come to you and they just want to make the big bank. They just want to make that 6% and they really don't care what your feelings are or how do you feel about not selling for that price or maybe you want to upgrade it and they want to talk you down. You're not that way. You, you talk about being authentic. That's that's how you talked me off of two ledges. Yeah. You know, the first house we sold needed a lot of renovations and we, we did the renovations. You did. And we got what we wanted for it because I, I 
bit the bu- bullet, so to speak. And right, the right. So, but that was the cutest little yeah, house. It was. It just needed a little, <laughs> little pretty enough. You know, need a little it was lipstick, very cute. It and was it's very a darling cute. house. Well, and then the second one you helped me sell, we put it on the market June nineteenth, and it sold on June twenty second, and that was before the market blew up like it did. Yeah, I mean, so, had we they, had well hindsight, right? It, but in the middle of COVID, that would have been multiple offers, and you would have gotten just amazing. But it was money. fine. It, but you know, you know that's the fine. screen and porch. It's a, it was a, it, and you know why uh, I love your house. I know this sounds super silly, but Chris and I, we grew up in a tri level mm-hmm. in in Meadowbrook West. Me and my parents moved here from North Carolina. We were Winston Salem kids. I remember. And m- mom and dad ended up buying a house over Meadowbrook West, uh, and it, it was a tri level. And and if you try, I try desperately to talk young people into tri levels because I think they're just this un. It's almost like a secret no one knows about. It's got great space. It's, it's really functionable. It's a neat house. And yours, beautiful house, backed up to nothing, just woods. Yep. And on top of it had a screen porch to die for. I lived out there. That I would literally would love to take a nap on. And many nights we had been out there with thunderstorms, listening to it rain. I love it. With the patio lights that you had hung mm-hmm. around it and the, the, little, the dogs running around, Luna and Little Bit. And just having some amazing conversations. I miss that. Uh, of that property, I miss that screen porch the most. I, I, and so, I, I'm so. with you. But I'm I like you. where I am. I've got that little deck that you guys sat on the other night. I, I've I would it. almost not trade the screen. I would be where you are right now. I to be love, honest I love where I am. I, I have landed and I am happier than I've been in 20 years. So it's been great. So That's it, yeah, girl. So that's all. That's now, all. it's a rental right now, Dawn. But when it becomes a sellable location we're going to work listen, you will be there <laughs> i'm going to make sure you get you, that house you because i want to sit on that deck because that garden is amazing yep I, I am rolling in juliet tomatoes right now i need to bring you some tomatoes my little juliet plums oh tomatoes. my goodness well they you've got so much right planted now. it's yeah, amazing it's, it's, it, those are kicking butt well so. i want you to tell the fine folks because i know and michael doesn't know and you may my sweet brother who is visiting from gainesville but comes and visit me often thank you so much um you have services. I mean, you provide uh-huh. personal chef services to yep. people, or you do events, or you do. I do it all. Um, it, other than a restaurant, um, you know, having a restaurant is so much more work than people realize. It's not just the passion of cooking and creating a, a delicious meal and putting it down in front of a diner. It, there's so much back end stuff to being in a right. restaurant, and I'm. And not, you had a storefront. I changed lanes career wise back in the um, late '90s and decided to go to culinary school at age 45. Graduated with honors three years later, um, during which time I was working at Sir La Table as a kitchen assistant, and I started my own little business called The Green Kitchen, and I thought it was going to be a cooking school, and it turned into catering and personal chef meals, and so what I currently have is I have eight families in the Richmond area, and that can fluctuate, but I have about eight families, most of which have some sort of dietary restrictions, or they don't like to cook, and I cook for them on a weekly basis, their meals, and then I deliver them, and then they warm them up through the week, and then I return the following week with more meals. So um, all you have to do is answer. I personally hate going to the grocery store. All you have to do is answer the door. <laughs> I- answer the door, and I'll hand you your food. Boom. Um, that is pr- that's pretty much it. And then I do pr- uh, catering and cooking lessons as well. This week I'm doing, um, Thursday night I'm doing a private dinner for a family who are saying goodbye to two good friends of theirs that are moving out of state. Oh, that's a, um, I never even would have thought about that. It's a gifted meal. And then Friday night, I'm doing a cooking lesson for a young couple. She bought it for her boyfriend. I'm going to their house to teach them something. Yeah. Um, Saturday is a drop-off catering for 20 people down in New Kent, um, some sort cow. of a party. Um, Sunday, I'm participating in a friend's big event of Cooking Jubilee with Village Garden out in Mechanicsville. So I run the gamut on food. I love to cook. And then, you know, this past weekend, I cooked for all of my family and friends. So I cook every day. And you day. cook for me and my boo? And I cook for it's you so and your beautiful. boo not, not long ago. So not long ago. I will do that again. Have so. you thought about doing a cookbook? I get asked that all the time. Okay. Um, and yes, I've been trying I have, to get my mother to do, now that she's retired. I've been uh-huh. trying to like have her do a small one right. just so we have something for me and my, just me and my sister. Yep. You know, because, you know, the day of her just calling and say, hey, mom, uh, how long was that again? Or, oh, I know. You know, it's yeah. going to be gone soon, you know, or hopefully, you know, that's 20 years or so, whatever it's going to be. But a cookbook. Everybody, it's an heirloom, it's, right? It's a, something. It is, and yeah. I and I'm contemplating it right now. Um, I actually have a friend in one of my women's groups, and she is a book publisher. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and Kim, Kim, Kim Ely, yeah. and Kim and I are. She's like, when you when, tell me when you're ready. When you're ready, let's work on it. So, because on. these days, a cookbook, you don't have to do the printing. 
Oh, I know. You can third party it and then have it Absolutely. whenever anyone right. orders it, and then it goes through Amazon. Well, so you don't even have to actually it, really. physically have an actual book. It, it, it's on You're the ba- it's on the back burner, Mike. Okay. <laughs> you get that? Well, we'll, yeah. we'll touch base on that. <laughs> okay. But I will say this: I think that too. You know, one of the things about co- you know COVID as ugly and fascist as it was, <laughs> there was some really awesome things that happened. It, People started eating at home, obviously, and cooking Mm -hmm. and exploring. I mean, I think social media was blown up with who has a recipe for this? Who has a recipe for that? And, and people going through like my, I don't know if I ever told you and you might not know. I grew up in a, we grew up in a restaurant. My dad owned a restaurant that's, you you know, and I was waiting tables at 11. There were many Friday and Saturday nights where Chris is bussing tables. I'm waiting tables. Mother's at the cash register and dad's cooking. I mean, you talk about a family affair and he's got handwritten recipes that I have. Oh, and I, I would it. really, I should have that bound You should in his handwriting. Yeah. And he was, and what he taught me, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. My dad, if I said, well, how did you make, he goes, well, you know, you, he, he did it by taste and feel. Absolutely. I tell Everything people that- was taste and feel. I measure nothing <laughs> to this day. Yeah. No one has died under my tutelage, but I'm telling you, if you come to my home, everything that I make, I can't really tell you how to make no. it. Because it's all through taste and feel. People ask me all the time, can you teach me how to cook? I'm like, you got 20 years? You know, it's, um, but what I really like to impart with people when I teach them is cooking is not just based on what that piece of paper is telling you. That's a guideline, okay? It, true that. And cooking is based on all of your senses. It is definitely based on your sense of taste, but it's your sense of smell. It's your sense of and hearing. It, it's your sense of touch. You want to feel whether or not something's thick right. enough. You stir it up. Well, then run your finger on the spoon and put it together between your fingertips and you're feeling what, what is that consisting? What is that what viscosity? Is that, does it feel like water or does it feel like right. oil? Well, if it feels like oil, then it's getting a little thicker. Yeah. So yeah, it is cooking is based on all of your senses. And I laugh when people get so stuck in amounts and not measuring. Well, they get you know, they, very. Um, they're, they're te- they, they have a technical. They're, they're, well, they're, right. There's yeah. a technique. That's their personality. Right. Right. They're not willing. To, there's a risk in being a little mm-hmm. fluid, right? You know, because sometimes I, yeah, I the make, first batch might not come out the exact well, that's way the you truth. want it I to mean, be. sometimes it doesn't. Know. But the reality is the more you experiment in, with yeah. different things, whether it be, you know, fennel or what, the, all the, because everything has its own personality it, it, it in being used in any recipe. Absolutely. And I'll, I like to tell people that change the texture of something, a, a roasted Brussels sprout that you've cut the core off and cut in half and roasted in the oven tastes completely different than a Brussels sprout that you've shaved into little disc and sauteed up with a little bit of pork and onion. Okay. That is, it's completely different. So you change the texture of something, and it changes the flavor. Yeah, and it's a big mouth or, and, thing. And, and tastes. It, that's it's a, it. It's a tremendous it's a mouth thing. It's, it's a about mouth thing. the the as you as Absolutely. you accept it in yep. how you're experiencing that. Exactly, and and I just, I love to cook for that reason alone. So anyway. speaking of Brussels sprouts, my poor mother, God rest her soul, was a shitty cook. I'm gonna give her a dollar just because out of respect. <laughs> my father was the cook. Her, not so much. She thought, my my sweet brother and I, every Monday, was macaroni and cheese with a hot dog cut up in it for scout night. Because oh. he was in Boy Scouts and I was in Girl Scouts. She could open a can better than anybody. But she was, the don't forget, and uh, that boy can eat a jar of applesauce to this day. She would boil Brussels <laughs> <laughs> And I am... Tammy will tell you, I there's not a vegetable on the planet that I will not eat. I love vegetables. I think there's something aromatic about vegetables. There's a sweetness. There's a lovely texture to them. She would boil these little GD cabbages, as I used to call them, and the stench alone turns yeah. you off. Fast forward, you know, into my adulthood, chefs start, what, roasting, frying, sauteing, baking. I am now a Brussels sprout addict. Yeah. Absolutely. Every restaurant I go to, I'm looking for your Brussels. I'm judging your restaurant based on how you cook your Brussels. But did you see the difference? Oh, the, absolutely. The, was, they it, became it, mushy globs that made the house stink. And we had to eat two or three. I mean, you know, I'm from Winston-Salem. We're Southern. We fry everything. We put everything mm-hmm. in grease and fat bag. <laughs> and you, you cleaned your plate. You had to eat something on of everything. Absolutely. I swear you not. And... We were traumatized by these Brussels sprouts. And then, I, you know, later in my life, I'm like, now they're a thing? What is this, what is this roasted Brussels sprout yeah, thing? It's, uh, but I, I actually read that you, uh, 
you get more DNA wise from your grandparents than you do from your parents. Thank and God. My, Thank God. <laughs> there are some things that my mom did cook well, but I can't say that I really learned to cook from her. But my grandmother, oh my God. fantastic cook and baker. And every well, time I bake, I feel my grandmother with me. I really and, do. And so. isn't that is the beauty of food? Mm-hmm. First of all, it's the community. I mean, coming to your home was lovely. Sitting with you was lovely. But then you're sharing your love for food. It just takes it to another. It's, it's just it's a love language in my I have said for years that if somebody likes to cook, you're going to taste the love in their food. Yes. And if they don't like to cook, their food's going to suck. Yeah. Is what it comes down to if they don't like to cook. And, so. I, and, and I, I, we are, we're a community or we're a culture built on breaking bread. Absolutely. I mean, what do you do when you celebrate, when you go out for birthdays or anniversaries? It's or always whatever? about breaking It's bread. always about food. Always yeah. is. And so if you have somebody that likes to cook it for you, that likes to be with you, then your food is going to taste delicious. So You see? You see what I'm talking about, <laughs> Michael? <laughs> What's your favorite dish to cook for someone? Wow. Um, I think you... I mean, it's, I know it's, it's kind of the, it's the loaded it's question, a, but, but there is, you know, there's one of those where it's kind of, you know, they're going to like it. Or is there your favorite just in general? I mean, do you... Well, I love to cook really all things. I love Thai and Vietnamese food. I love those cuisines. I love Indian food. Um, you know, a standard, quote-unquote, standard dish for me would actually be a pomegranate pork tenderloin that I love to do with some Ooh. spices, dry mm-hmm. rubbed, and then you reduce some pomegranate juice. Um, but as far as, like, a, there's there's two all-time things for me that in the cookbook, when it comes, will be in there, and that is my tomato pie. Oh God, I and love it! Corn, oh, you just said. Salsa. Hold on a minute, I'm having a moment. <laughs> tomato pie. Tomato pie. Tomato pie yeah. is one of the freaking most amazing experiences any human being will ever have. I am. That um, is that right there. Do you I have am, a picture uh, of this? Because we have to show it up on the. Yeah. On so the you actually, you can find the link to YouTube. I'm actually the chef also for Virginia Living, which is a show that's put on by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Uh huh. And you can find it um, on. I'm telling you that. Uh, your tomato pie. My segment for tomato pie has gotten over 30,000 views on wow. YouTube. So if you want to find that link and pull that up, that's great. Yeah, okay. let's just we'll sh- put, put a the, shot of that on yeah. the screen yeah. so everybody can, or, or link it too. Yeah. Get, get, I'm making it this it. weekend for this thing I'm doing on Sunday. Um, and then um, the other pie. thing is corn salsa. Um, oh. I found this recipe years ago, changed it and made it my own, and it's been mine ever since. And now when my friends have parties, they'll say, what are you bringing? What are you bringing? And then they get to me, it's like, you're bringing corn salsa. And it's like, yeah, I don't, she doesn't I, have a choice. I don't anymore. have a choice. It's like, I have to bring the corn salsa. And I only make it in the summer when everything's ripe and fresh out of the garden. So, mm. yeah. Although, I have to say, I one time brought her some greens when she were recovering. You were had, you had surgery. Oh, Kip. Mm. And I, she, Kip did fried chicken and I did the greens and I made them vegan or vegetarian. They were delicious. Instead of putting meat in them. I ate them. And you, and you said, and you were like, what? This is awesome. And they were like I, diced tomatoes in there. And yeah, I, I love stuff like that. I, and that's the other thing, too. I love taking something and kind of inverting it. Exactly. Right? Well, should I tell them your hot dog carrot story? <laughs> Damn straight. Tell is them. This with the right, ra- is this, this one, with the okay. rabbit? Uh, no. no t- this is, we this is we even need better. a hot dog carrot story. Here we this, go. This lady comes to me. She, call, she decides she's going to try to be vegan a few years ago. And she says... Oh, she goes, man, I did this great carrot, and it tasted exactly like a hot dog. <laughs> and I was just kind of stood there and shook my head. I said, why don't you just eat the carrot? I mean, why did, why, why? Are you trying to make it into something? are you something? trying to make it into meat? When it, at the, anyway, I just kind of Because you're, you're, you know, you're trying. So when you're in the vegan space, right, you, you know, you're in my own son, you two are smart asses, by the way, you and Aaron. He's like, Mom, everything, every vegetable thing you, you know, you eat looks like a hamburger patty. You're just trying to like, it's a knockoff. So you basically took amino acid, you know, the amino mm-hmm. acids and the smoked, what is it called? The smoked, Liquid whatever. Smoke. That's it. And you soak this, you cook the carrot, you boil it. You shave it so it kind of looks this even, and then you s- <laughs> shut up. D- quit laughing. <laughs> well, you've shaved it. You've I, I it, made. You've I made it. it. I shaped it like a hot dog, and then I put it in the liquid smoke, and then it, it takes a brown color, mm-hmm. and it takes a salty taste of a hot dog, and you put it on a bun with a relish. <laughs> you took every bit of vitamin content out of that carrot to make it look and taste like a hot dog. <laughs> Oh my god! I just I still shake my head at that. I'm just like you know, just eat the carrot. I told you she calls me on my shit, right? Did I tell you that? 
put some ketchup on here, a here, here, <laughs> here. Cheers to you, my sister. <laughs> to you. She calls me out on my shit. But I, you know, I, I for a moment got to feel like I'm taking well, and in, in all, in in you know, total, you know, authenticity, authenticity. I've had a couple transparency. I've had a few bourbons. Um, I'm alpha gal, so I can't eat pork or beef. I know. I am allergic to pork, for, you know, pork and it's beef. It's I will, yeah, I will literally get hives head Man, to toe. that's crazy. It's yeah. retarded. I and and, and it. the, the disease actually comes from being bitten by a tick at some point. Yeah. And Dawn is actually one of five or six people that I know that has this. You can't take anything for it? Like, you know, nope. for like gout or something like that? No. Yeah. You can get your titers checked every so often, and sometimes people do come out of it, but it's 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 actually substantially new. Man, if I couldn't eat a steak. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, and, and the way I found about it is I was showing property to a friend, and we were going, you know, we we're out in Goochland, and we would come out of the woods just covered in ticks. And every time, and I started putting two and two together because I would break out in these hives. And when I say hi, I don't mean like just you get rashy. I mean eyes are closed, throat's closing up, the whole nine. And... I called my doctor, and there. So, alpha gal is it's, it's tick born, like Tammy said. It's it's the um, it's a it's the, a specific the, the deer tick. spot. It's, the, it's the got the a little deer. dot on its back, little white dot. Yep. And it doesn't affect everybody because my girlfriend didn't. It didn't affect her. It did me. And I am sensitive to the to such an extent that I can't take capsules, which are gelatin based. Gelatin in the United States yes, is a do. mammal product so that they cow. they bind. You know, they, they put the capsule, they make the capsule so you can't with. take a capsule of ibuprofen? No, I have to take tablets only. Uh, certain makeups I can't use because they, you if they use animal products, and like uh, steric acid in the United States is animal-based. In Europe, it's not. It's, you know, vegetable-based. <laughs> there are certain binders that we use here in the United States for medications and makeups and lotions and all the things that you use for toiletries that I have to read the label, and if it's not a um, plant-based product <clears throat> or a vegan product, I can't, I can't touch it because the next thing I know, I'm, you know, I'm rationing up. It's ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. totally ridiculous. And, you know, one of my kids was like, well, why don't you just eat a bacon hamburger and see if you're still sensitive? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll go to the emergency room, open up my Burger King bag. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be in a good place. You, you know? know, and then you I'll might eat enjoy the, the flavor. And yeah, not, I then mean, you'll be, then, you then I'm, uh, I can't breathe anymore. I mean, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> like uh, epinephrine. It's like, like, like but Pulp Fiction. Too, you know? Exactly. <laughs> it's like exactly. Some pe- and she's right. There's some people that kind of it kind of wears off and they go on. I almost am more sensitive, especially from a product perspective, you know, lotions and all that sort of thing. So, yeah. but it's it's become part of my lifestyle. I don't think about it anymore. Well, because this and has been five or seven well, years ago. Well, obviously, let, you know, if you were one of my clients, and but I, I am I trying to make a carrot a dog. dog. <laughs> Girl, that's a that's the title of the of the podcast. Let's make a carrot into a hot dog. <laughs> okay, so Gordon Ramsay, Bobby Flay, or Wolfgang Puck. Which order? Um, Kat Cora, April Bloomfield. I know. Um, I understand. I, I'm sorry. I, I, that's, I, deep, I, that's deep cut. D- deep cut, you know, of, of which of those would be my favorite? I'd put them in order. I would say Wolfgang Puck, Bobby Flay, and then Gordon Ramsay. Oh, wow. You know, Wolfgang's been around a long time. He yeah. knows his shit. Uh-huh. You know? um, Bobby Flay is, is okay. You know, he was a college dropout. His father told him he had to go get a job, so he got a job washing dishes in a restaurant. And look uh-huh. at him now. That's how that worked. Um, Gordon, um, I've understood to be a really good chef, but you know, I think he's a shock chef. You know what I mean? That's how I see Gordon Ramsay. Well, that's his, that's his shtick. Yeah. You know, it's like the yelling and the screaming. And so that's, what's made him famous. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't really necessarily, I don't know that he's a good chef because I've never really had a chance to experience anything he's done. He's Mm -hmm. just always yelling at people. (laughs) Um, now my thing is, you know, the female industry in the chef industry, we are still quote unquote second class. And we're not recognized near as much as these male chefs. Uh-huh. Um, I actually had a, a, a reservation at one of Bobby Flay's restaurants years ago in New York. And I read Food and Wine's Best New Chefs list. And one of them was April Bloomfield, who had opened a Spotted Pig in the Village. I canceled Bobby Flay's reservation and went to eat at her place. Uh-huh. You know, I, I like supporting the female chefs. I mean, you know, growing up, you know, you said your mom was a bad cook. But technically in the old days, quote unquote, the woman it, the was, female the cook. was the cook. The female was the cook. Which is when you're talking, so, I'm a little shocked because that we've, that 
we have usurped our position in that space we, we have. as women because yeah. we were the feeders of the family. There's Am only, I right? Yeah, there's only 6%, um, excuse me, I think I just read, um, 9% of the chefs in the country are females and only 6% of those are head chefs in the country, in the wow. United States. So I, I just, I, I find it, I, I'm happy for the guys, don't get me wrong. I mean, but still, you know, if, if a female is trying to up and come into a restaurant or own her own, it's a little bit more difficult for her. Yeah. So I'm, I'm constantly supporting the female chefs, and I would much rather go to a female chef-owned restaurant. So, anyway, that's just me. There you go. Thank you for bringing that. <laughs> it's just a question. I love it. No, I love I'm that. not offended. No, I, and no I'm one's not, offended. I, I'm not offended at all. I actually, before Anthony Bourdain passed, I, you know, we had to do a book report on him when I was in culinary school, and yeah. I found him to be. I think he's fascinating, quite the, frankly. The books that I read by him were very, I, I found, found his whole personality to be, very pompous and rude, um, and I just never really cared for Anthony Bourdain. And then he and Eric Repair came to the Paramount Theater in 2011 and spoke. And it was a packed house, and all of us were chefs, and we're listening to these guys talk. And I walked out of there that night with a brand new respect for Anthony Bourdain. Mm-hmm. He yeah. spoke so highly of the craft of food and how they become chefs and things like that. Yeah. And I was blown away by him having been, quote-unquote, in a personal situation with him. Um, and so, yeah, I gained a new respect for him. And I'm not, I'm not saying that because he's passed now, but he and Eric Repair are best buddies. Eric Repair is a Buddhist. Anthony Bourdain said the F word, every other word, and yet they were best buddies. Mm. And mm. so I always found that. Well, there was a issue. mutual respect. It was a mutual respect for each other, especially yeah. in the craft of food. You know, two of the things that Anthony Bourdain said, you, you talk about people cooking for you and being a chef and stuff like that. Anthony Bourdain said his mother-in-law made the best meatloaf he had ever had in his life. You know, and then the other thing he said, which I thought was great, is he would sneak out close to closing time at night with a hoodie on and go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Anthony Bourdain liked Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Best restaurant in town. Oh, wow. God, that's hard. Um, well, my all-time favorite restaurant, unfortunately, did close during COVID, and that was Mama Zoo's in um, Oregon Hill. Oh, my gosh. Um, Southern Italian food. You being of Italian, mm-hmm. you would have loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, second best would... Um, the uh, actually um, would be Marwar, which is down in Topping, Virginia. And it's um, oysters, uh, mostly oysters. Um, mm-hmm. And the company, the Croxtons that own that, own Rappahannock here in Richmond at Fourth and Grace. I like Rappahannock a lot. Um, I don't want to really say favorite because I love them all. I love La Possum over in, mm-hmm. or again, Oregon Hill. Mm-hmm. David Shannon does a great job with his food. It's, it's definitely a very celebratory restaurant, and it takes weeks to get a reservation there. Wow. Long Oven over in Scott's Edition. Again, another great restaurant. I, there's there's probably many more that I'm neglecting to mention, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I like them. Favorite hangout restaurant to go? Hangout restaurant. Um, so, is that like back home, I have a place that it's just like... You just hang. You just like to go and, you know, regardless if you eat anything or just... Well, I'd almost have to say again, it's it's uh, another restaurant that closed during COVID, and that was Pescado's in Midlothian. Oh, my oh. God, Pescado's yes. is a Latin Caribbean seafood. I actually did a little bit of an internship there with them. Um, my son ended up getting a job there and became sous chef, and um, they very well known for their Latin seafood, and I could sit at the bar and drink a jalapeno margarito and uh, margarito. Ooh. Yeah. That's good bourbon right there. <laughs> anyway, I'd, I'd drink a uh, uh, spicy jalapeno margarita there and, and eat their food. I would say that would have been my favorite. Um, right now, I haven't really found one since then. You know, I love to cook. And I, so a lot of times I'm like, I just want to cook something. Right. You know, I cooked all day yesterday. And then at 7 o'clock last night, I cooked my own dinner. Right. So, you know. Girl loves her own cooking. That's yeah. all I got to say. Never trust a chef that doesn't eat, eat their eat own, their own food. food. If they don't eat their own food, then you don't want to eat it either. <laughs> hey, that's a life lesson right there. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, my precious people, for being with us today. And all I have to say is the best bourbon is the bourbon you enjoy. Oh, it's the bourbon you pour for me. Uh, love you, sister. <laughs> and go out there and have an amazing experience with exceptional people. And you've lived a great life. See you next time. You've been listening to the Real Estate and Bourbon Podcast, hosted by Dawn Roy. Have real estate or bourbon questions or a juicy story you want us to talk about? Call our hotline at 804-293-0550, and maybe you can be on our podcast. This has been a Studio 77 production. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow the Real Estate and Bourbon Podcast.